Welcome in this video where we're going to implement the conditional generative adversarial networks paper from 2014. Um, so we'll uh, we will uh, generate the results on the MNIST datasets. Um, these are the results we'll get by the end of this video. So these are not the best results, but these are uh, comparable to the one we are from the paper. I think that with better hyperparameters, they could have gotten uh, better results. Uh, but anyway, these are the results uh, we'll get by the end of this video. So each um, each row is conditioned on one label. Um, and these are, are again comparable to the results from the paper. Uh, on for 2014, these were already uh, good results. Even though the, the results from the GAN paper was a bit, were a bit better, but they were not conditioned on labels. So let's start directly in the implementation. Uh, I've already made a video about the uh, GAN paper. If you're interested, uh, have a look at it. Uh, this video will be very uh, similar to it. So we'll start by importing our modules. We'll use PyTorch, uh, a few uh, helpers such as NumPy uh, to, to implement a few helpers uh, on Matplotlib for plotting the results. We'll use Keras, but not for implementing our own networks, just for uh, using its data sets and for loading the MNIST data without having it, uh, to, download it, to download it uh, manually. So let's start, start directly by loading the data. On, uh, we will only use the training data and let's normalize it so that the data will be scaled uh, between 0 and 1. Then we can create a few helpers. First, an helper to sample a mini batch from the training data. So, first we sample pointers uh, and then we uh, get the training data and those sampled uh, indices. Uh, and then uh, for the labels, we will, uh, as often in machine learning, we will use one hot encoding that would be much better than just giving the label as, uh, as a digit. Then we get a function to sample noise. Uh, in that case, we use uh, uniform noise. I think this is what they use in the paper, uh, rather than uh, Gaussian noise. And we use uh, 100 dimensional uh, latent noise. Then we can implement our generator. So its uh, input size is 100, as we said. This is the size of the latent, uh, di uh, latent space. Then the context dimension, so the uh, conditioning, uh, it's 10. And so th we take uh, 10 values, so the one hot, on one hot encoding. And then the output dimension is a vector of 28 by 28, uh, 28 times 28 pixels that will reshape to form an image. So first, they will, there are two branches. This is uh, like that in the paper. Um, let's have a look at this figure. So uh, this order generator is implemented. One uh, first one layer for the uh, latent uh, uh, latent data, one layer for the um, for the generated data. Uh, uh, one layer for the label, one layer for the latent space, and then we will uh, concatenate the results, uh, the, the hidden unit, uh, to, 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 to create the tail of the neural network. And this is the same for the discriminator. So first we create um, one layer for latent space, one layer for the, uh, for the conditioning, and then we combine the results. Um, so we have uh, on one side 200 uh, hidden, diamond, uh, hidden input, hidden, uh, hidden cells, on the other side, 1,000, and then concatenate them to have 100, uh, 1,200. Uh, so far, so good. So now we can, uh, that we have all those layers, we can combine them to have the fraud function. So first, we get the first, uh, the first hidden cell, then the second one, we concatenate them, and then we uh, push them to the second hidden layer, and then to output layer. Uh, I didn't mention that, but we are using dropout in this paper to avoid overfitting. We'll use it in both the discriminator and the generator. Uh, when uh, you see that uh, in some papers, uh, I always suggest that you play a bit with it, that you remove dropout, you play a bit with the amount of, uh, of dropout. You will see that in, uh, sometimes it has a dramatic impact and without it, you will have uh, a lot of overtraining. In that case, we don't have overtraining, but we can have very bad results. So please try it and uh, have a look at the performance with and without dropout. Uh, here now the discriminator, so its input size is 28 by 28 pixels, or 28 times 28. And again, the uh, conditioning uh, dimension is 10. And again, we have the same architecture as the, as the generator. It's just the, uh, the size of the uh, hidden, uh, hidden uh, units that change a little bit. And again, the fraud function is similar. We first uh, uh, um, uh, embedded the, uh, the latent, uh, the, the, the data on the context dimension, and then we, sp we smear them to the uh, second hidden dimension and then to the output layer. So now that we have the, uh, all the pieces needed, we can create a training function. We'll take the generator, the discriminator, uh, an optimizer for each of them. Uh, we will use schedulers, so a scheduler for each optimizer, and then we'll train for a number of uh, epochs. There is this k parameter that is uh, often used in, um, 
in a generative model. So sometimes we train the, gen, uh, the discriminator a bit more than a generator, and this is this parameter k. And then we use the batch size uh, equal to 100 by default. So we start by creating a, a, disc, a dictionary with two uh, with two um, lists to uh, log the generative and the discriminative loss on a weak rate over the number of epochs. So we start by training the, gen uh, the discriminator again for k, ep for k epochs. We uh, start by sampling some noise on some uh, data from the distribution. Um, and then we will uh, uh, compute the standard uh, binary cross entropy loss that, that we use uh, on that was used in the initial elegant paper. So we're not using more advanced loss such as the LSE loss. Uh, so least square or GAN. Uh, so we just create a, a discriminative uh, loss. Um, and then we, uh, yeah, this is the loss for the discriminator. So then we uh, update the weights of the discriminator by doing one gradient step. And then we can move, out to move on to training the generator. For training the generator, we don't need a real data, but we need uh, labels in order to condition the generator uh, for generating some, uh, some data with some labels. So we, then we, uh, we compute the score, the discriminator score for those uh, data, and we compute the binary cross entropy loss. And then again, we, we update the uh, weight of the generator by doing one uh, gradient step. And then we update uh, the uh, learning rate with the schedulers. Um, so we trade over all the, all the schedulers onto a scheduler step. We put on the training loss, and then we can move on to the main, uh, to the main code. So we put all the pieces together, we create the discriminator, the generator, the optimizers, the scheduler. Uh, I uh, created those parameters to get the same results as in the paper. So to get uh, the, uh, yeah, by the end that after training, I will get the same learning average uh, as they did. Um, and then we can uh, start the uh, training function, return our generator, discriminator. Uh, on, uh, you can see that the number of epochs is a bit weird. Uh, this is uh, to get the same, um, uh, the same uh, as in the paper because they did not train, um, they did not do iteration after iteration. They, iter they did a few epochs over the whole training set. So in order to get the same results as the, as the, uh, the same hyperparameter as they did, uh, we need to use this uh, very weird uh, number. And then we can plot the results. So we'll iterate over all the digits. So for each, um, for each digit, we'll sample 10 images. Uh, so we have this generator that will sample 10, uh, 10 images for each digit, and then we can plot them and save the results. And then we are done. Um, so not very complicated, uh, very similar to basic GAN. We just need to add this conditioning. So I really hope this video was uh, helpful to you. If it was, please leave the thumbs up. It really helps with this, uh, this channel uh, to, to get other people to know this content. And please subscribe for more videos like that. Thank you again.